music at Ardingly College in West Sussex. Robert continues to perform as a recitalist all over the world and returns to New Zealand frequently, both to perform and to record. He's made an album of Liszt and Roitke for Atoll Records, which was released in 2008. He begins with music by the 16th century Flemish composer Thielmann Zuzato, Morgentanz or Moorish Dance, arranged by Noel Rawstorn. Robert Costin with the Morantance by Tilman Zuzato. Here he is introducing the next piece, one of Bach's Preludes and Fugues in E minor. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to be back in New Zealand and Auckland and to be playing this marvellous instrument, which gets better and better every time I reacquaint myself with it. It's been a joy to work out a program of, I suppose, entrees, main courses, and a few desserts as well. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, the next piece by Bach really is a gigantic piece in every respect, uh, certainly lengthwise, and gigantic for the performer. I see it like an organ symphony. In some ways it's like the first organ symphony ever composed, Vidor, Vjern, well perhaps Bach got there before them. Um, I mentioned the fugue subject uh, is based on a wedge like theme, which means if you listen out for it, it starts on E and then gradually gets wider and wider, so it's quite recognizable each time it returns. So I hope you enjoy it.
Johann Sebastian Bach's Prelude and Fugue in E minor, The Wedge, BWV 548, Robert Coston on the Auckland Town Hall organ. Next is a piece by Ethelbert Nevin, a 19th century pianist and composer from Pennsylvania. This is Narcissus, one of Nevin's water scenes, transcribed for organ by Reginald Goss Custard. Narcissus by Ethelbert Nevin, one of his five water scenes, Opus 13. Robert Coston introduces the next composer, Percy Granger. Granger is a fascinating musical figure. He, I, I've read a biography of him and he really was a very strange man. I went on a pilgrimage to Melbourne to the museum. Then it's, that's a very interesting um, place to visit. And I think he wrote some wonderful music as well, which isn't played enough some big pieces as well. In this concert, Robert performs his colonial song from 1911, the composer's attempt at a melody typical of the Australian countryside. Sir Thomas Beecham was none too kind about the work, calling it the worst piece of modern times. Well, Robert Coston lets the listener be the judge.
Percy Granger's Colonial Song, transcribed by Orvis Ross, performed on the Kleiss organ of the Auckland Town Hall. The featured performer, Robert Coston, shed some light on the next work, Mendelssohn's Organ Sonata No. 6 in D minor. The first movement, a set of variations, is based on um, a Lutheran chorale, and it's incredible how Mendelssohn creates variety out of that, whilst also making the, the chorale recognisable in each variation. It ends with a big toccata, which is great fun to play, in fact. It sounds more difficult than it actually is, which is always good. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much.
Organ Sonata number no. 6 in D minor by Felix Mendelssohn. After the interval, Robert Coston came back to the Kleiss organ with a touch of Spanish zest by the French composer Louis James Alfred Lefebvre Velli. His Bolero de Concert shows why his was some of the most flamboyant organ music of the 19th century.
Thank you very much. Next, I'm going to play uh, one of Bach's six cheer sonatas, the, the first one. These are very special works to all organists, not least because they're almost, I hesitate to say this, perfect pieces of music, and also because they're treacherous. They say that you can play all the Bach cheer sonatas, you can play anything. And they were composed in the late, well, collected together in the late 1720s for Bach's beloved eldest son. First chair sonata, let's take to say, they say it's the easiest one, but I don't think that's the case. They're glorious pieces. I mean, chair sonatas, um, we've got left hand, right hand, and pedals, so they're all of equal importance, which makes uh, the pedals particularly demanding because they're. Uh, mirroring what's happening in, in the hands. And if you can imagine perhaps two violins and a cello, um, they have been recorded quite often using uh, different combinations and they work extremely well, but organists are very jealous of them, so we like to keep them for ourselves really.
Bach's Trio Sonata in E-flat, played by Robert Coston. The last item on this program is Incantation pour un jour saint, Dominica in Palmis, or Incantation for a Holy Day, Palm Sunday, by Jean Langlais. This French composer was the organist at Paris's Basilica of Sainte Clotilde for 42 years and composed this incantation in 1949 based on a chant from the Catholic Easter liturgy, combining prayer and dance in a crescendo of spiritual fervour, he says. Once again, it's performed by Robert Coston on the organ of the Auckland Town Hall.
Incantation pour un jour saint, Incantation for a Holy Day by Jean Longley. The final piece from Robert Coston in his recital on the Auckland Town Hall organ. That concert was recorded by Larry Elliott in April of this year and post-produced and presented by Robbie Ellis for Radio New Zealand Concert. It's 11 minutes past four. Coming up between now and oh, around about half past five, we have a selection of music conducted by Claudio Abado, a wonderful conductor who died in January of this year at the age of 80. Among his most prestigious appointments uh, were head of the Vienna and Berlin Philharmonic Orchestras. He was in charge of moulding the Berlin Philharmonic after the Karajan years. He was also music and artistic director of the La Scala Orchestra and principal conductor of the London Symphony Orchestra for a time. He collaborated.